How you doing everyone? Uh, Kana here again. What we're going to do today it can be a pretty fun activity for the family if you feel a little crafty. Um, now, it's also a sustainable thing as well, which is great. One of the things that we used to make um, for bindings and stuff like that to create things like our fish traps or perhaps binding together our houses and shelters that we created was this nifty piece of string. Now this string is, as you can see, kind of woven together in a particular way. It's also something that is created from a South Australian plant that we found that we find close to riverbeds. Now for those of you that haven't seen this around, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, or maybe you're unsure, this is something that we call a club rush reed. There are also other types of it, one of those being um, a close relative which is called the bull rush reed. You will find this again close to um, a lot of rivers in South Australia. Now, a couple of the things that we do to create this string is first, you will need to find yourself one or perhaps more depending on how much you want to make uh, of these reeds. And I find the easiest thing to use is a nice, smooth, flat stone or rock as well. And the first thing that you want to do is actually find a flat surface, just like we have here. And you want to softly kind of tap at the reed to I guess crush it a little bit and flatten it out. You don't want to hit it too hard, otherwise you will actually snap the reed itself. Now you're going to do this from top to bottom. Make sure that you find it with this little club sitting on top and keep that there as well. I'll show you what that is going to be used for in, in a moment. But again, this is something that sometimes what the old people would do, they would sit down and make this um, perhaps all day, depending on how much they needed. We would use it to create fishing lines. And again, for those of you that can remember from my last um, video, I'm gonna see if you can pop it in the comments. Uh, what, if I'm making a fishing line, what am I going to use as a fishing hook? If you know the answer and have been listening to the previous videos, just pop that in the comments. That would be amazing. Um, and what, what you do is connect a whole bunch of this to get a longer kind of um, length of string. After you've reached from top to bottom, flatten and flat, have flattened it out, you will then need to actually separate a lot of these fibers. Now there's a really easy way to do this. After you've flattened it, you can see now that it's a lot more malleable or flexible. Um, the next thing that you want to actually do is just kind of rub it in between your hands and it will get out at, um, a lot of the fibers that are inside, which we call pith. Um, now, after you've done this, you'll have to again do it from top to bottom, just rubbing through your hands and you'll start to see that the fibers are actually starting to separate a lot more. Yeah, um, Do this the whole way through. Now one of the cool things about the ways that they actually used to do this, um, sometimes you might have someone holding the other end so that you can help yourself tie it together, but if you didn't have someone to hold it, you would actually either hold it in your mouth or sometimes you would sit there and hold it in between your toes. Um, what they used to do and what a lot of people found um, to separate and kind of flatten out the fibers, the old women used to actually pull this through their back molar's teeth and it would separate those fibers. Now after a long time of doing that, what certain, and you'll have to uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think archeologists are the ones that dig up remains and stuff like that of um, people and artifacts and whatnot. Um, correct me if I am wrong, uh, but what they actually found is that some of the old women, because they were pulling it through their teeth quite regularly to create this string, some of the skulls that they found in Australia actually had kind of dug out areas in their teeth from constantly wearing it down through the teeth. Um, now that we've rolled this through our hands all the way through, you can see that it's all quite 
um, separated and parted nicely. What you want to do next, now women are usually better at this and a lot of young girls might be natural at this. What you do, split it in two and then you're kind of going to do a bit of a plaiting method almost. Um, which is why sometimes girls are better at it. Or you can just kind of hold it there. You want to roll it in between your um, fingers and then just kind of cross it over. And you're going to roll and cross it over and roll and continue that all the way through. Now, the reason I told you to keep the, um, the club on the end of the reed is because that basically acts as a natural knot. So after you've done the whole thing, all you have to do is do a knot at the end of it. All right? So make sure when you do find it, if you give it a go, to keep the club on the end. Otherwise, you're just going to have to add another knot at the top and the bottom. Now, as you can see, we're starting to get that pattern all the way through. And that's what you'll get, all right? And then you'll do that through the whole way. Sometimes you might add extra lengths to it. But this is, again, a nice, cool trick that you can, or a nice activity that you can do with your family if you are maybe making a bouquet for, some, for something or just wanting to um, create something while you're sitting around. Anyways, that is probably it from me for now, guys. Hope you are enjoying your day, and I will see you next time. Bye.